So the systematic development of policies is designed to make sure that even if you outnumber us, you will not have more than us. So we want enough of y'all to go to prison and go to jail so that you can stop reproducing babies, black men, because if you're locked up between 17 and 45, you will miss your reproductive years. Y'all don't understand. I, I wish y'all could wake up. Hi, this is Bishop James Dixon at the Community of Faith Church in Houston, Texas, welcoming you to the Empowered by Faith broadcast. So excited to bring to you a message series this week entitled, Are You Woke? I'm telling you, it's going to bless your life. And by the way, thank you for praying with us and for supporting our ministry. The Community of Faith Church empowers people to become visible manifestations of the power of God in the presence of people. You want to check us out every Sunday at 10 o'clock a.m., our live uh, worship is on Facebook. You can watch this this coming Sunday and tell your friends about it because it will certainly change your life. Our church is a church like none other. We make an impact every day in the lives of people in our community. In fact, right after this message, I'll be back with the word, Are You Woke? Watch this. I'll be back in a moment. These are perilous times for America. The social climate is impacted by racial injustice, a broken criminal justice system that unjustly punishes poor people and people of color. The ongoing story of police brutality against unarmed people has strained relationships between the community and law enforcement. And add to this the voter suppression movement, where states like Texas are enacting laws that are designed to decrease black and brown voter participation. So, what does the church do in the midst of this kind of social turmoil? Well, the church should be doing what Bishop James Dixon and the community of faith is doing. We are leading the fight for justice, equality, and righteousness. I am glad to be a part of a church that doesn't remain silent when unarmed men and women are being killed by police. Everyone knows that Bishop Dixon is God's voice for social justice and for positive changes in our society. Some people talk it, Bishop Dixon walks it. Yes, the community of faith keeps proving that it's a battleship church not a cruise ship. In addition to being an anointed preacher and pastor, Bishop Dixon is a real leader who serves to empower his community. So you see him in Austin at the Capitol, challenging lawmakers to pass laws to combat child sex trafficking. Bishop Dixon is there to fight against voter suppression. You see him standing with other leaders, speaking truth to power in behalf of the less fortunate. I am happy to partner with Bishop Dixon because I know he's not in it for himself. He's dedicated to the hard work of fighting for the people. That's why, my friends, you should partner with James Dixon Ministries. Praying and supporting James Dixon Ministries makes a much needed difference. So go to jamesdixonministries.org to become a partner today. We thank God for your support. And if you're looking for a church, a real church, a battleship church, look no further. You found it. It's the community of faith, and we welcome you to your new church family. Today I'm talking from the subject, Are You Woke? Part two. Thank you so very much. The question being posed today, Are You Woke? is being directed to several groups of people. Are you woke? This is modern vernacular, has its roots in young black conversation. Woke refers to being socially aware, politically alert, astute in terms of the mores of the times. What, what's happening? And why? It has to do with paying attention to what ought to be paid attention to. Are you woke? The opposite of that would be to be disengaged, to be disengaged from what's real. Uh, this is not dealing with the physical, but dealing with the mental, the intellectual, even the spiritual. Are you woke? First and foremost, I direct this question 
to those who claim to love God, who claim Jesus as our Lord and our Savior. Are you woke? Because Christians right now need to be woke. In times like these, if the church ain't woke, if Christians are not woke, if pastors and preachers are not woke, uh, then we will not be able to serve our present age in a way that is relevant. Nothing worse than being an irrelevant church. Uh, Jesus, Jesus helped us with that. In Matthew 5, when he said, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its savor, Jesus said it becomes good for nothing. But to be cast out, somebody talk back to me, and trodden under men's feet. In other words, Jesus says, a church that ain't woke ain't good for nothing. And I, 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 I want to tell you that there, there are so many churches, congregations, uh, that are proving not to be good for much. And it's not based on your size. It's not based on how many members you brag about. It's not, it's not based on the size of your building. But how relevant is your message? How resourceful is your ministry, how relatable are your methods for impacting our community and society, and what benefit is it that people are connected to it? Are you woke? Secondly, this question is directed to those who claim that freedom, equality, equity and justice, and all that American democracy promises is the right or is a right that should be protected on behalf of every person in our nation. I'm speaking to those who claim that you believe that American democracy consisting of equality, equity, and freedom should be the inherent right of every person in the nation. Are you woke? Do you realize that, that there are people in this nation who are systematically and structurally locked out for whom the democracy has never worked? Or are you knowledgeable of the fact that there are individuals based on who they are, where they live, and what their skin tones are, the melaton in, in, in their skin, to determines whether or not they have equal access uh, to all that American democracy proposes to promise. Are you woke? This is whether you are black, white, or brown, whether you are Democrat or Republican, small d, small r. I, 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 I like small d's and r's on that. Uh, I'll tell you why, because I'm, I'm, I'm a part of a higher party called, you know, the, the kingdom of God. And I, 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 I weigh all things from a kingdom perspective. But the question is, are you woke? Or are you woke? You a freedom lover. You... You believe that equality, equity, and justice are rights that American democracy should protect on behalf of all. Uh, but are you woke enough to understand that for many that is a myth, and for many that is a, a, a reality, a dream that's deferred? Yes. And Langston Hughes said, what's worse than a, a dream deferred? I wish I had time to quote the poem. I'm simply saying to you that that we are not living in a nation that has lived up to the true meaning of its creed. That Dr. King's assertion that one day, one day, one day, my children will live in a country where they're not judged by the color of their skin, but content of their character, that that day has not yet come. Yes, and we continue to prove through policies, through policies and through practices that we don't intend for that to be the reality for many. Do you, are, are you woke? Are you woke? Are you woke? 
or, 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 or you will. This, this, this question is being posed, being posed to, to, to those who, to whom I speak now, uh, who, who claim, who claim that we love all people the same that we love all people the same and that, that all of us are made uh, in the image and likeness of God and therefore that there's no human being on the planet of lesser value than another. Uh, not just Americans, but understanding that a child in, in Indonesia, a child in Uganda, a child or a person in Somalia has the same human value as does someone in America. And we ought to be concerned about drones that are being dropped on, on, on foreign soil, spying on, and then bombs killing innocent people in lands far away because when Jesus raises the question, who is my neighbor, he's not talking just about the man next door. And, and, and we, we, do, do you claim that all human life is made in the image and likeness of God and, and therefore is sacred and that the sanctity of life ought to be preserved and protected no matter where that life may be. Even the little children on the border who we decided to put in cages. It's to understand that the life in that cage is as valuable as a life in that private school classroom. Uh, are you woke? Are you woke? Are you woke? And it's amazing to me how hard it is to wake some people up. My, my, my. You know, some people get up and just at the sound of an alarm clock. Others get up because a sun ray comes through the window. Yes, Others, you got to shake and push and shove, and they got they got to hit the snooze button, and you got to push them. You got to wake them up. You got to make noise. And some of y'all, it's just hard to wake you up. My, 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 my. In his poem, Bert Norton poet T.S. Eliot, T.S. Eliot wrote these lines. He said, we moderns are distracted by distractions from distractions. Uh, we, we are distracted by distractions from distractions. And although Eliot wrote this poem in 1936, they describe our present reality. The purpose of my preaching and speaking is to rescue our attention from the planned and sinister, sinister distractions. Please understand that there are false and superficial narratives that are propaganda uh, and they're designed by a corrupt corporate uh, system of manipulation that's purpose to keep this generation preoccupied with distractions that don't matter. Ooh, I wish I had uh, uh, an audience I, I, could, I, could, I, could, I could talk back to. It could talk back to me. I'm saying to you, I hope you've been blessed by this message entitled, Are You Woke? And it's going to wake you up even more when we come back in just a moment. But I want to encourage you to be sure and follow me on social media. All of my handles are right there on the screen. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Subscribe to my channel because every day there's something out there that's going to inspire you, encourage you, and bless your life. And remember to join us this coming Sunday at 10 o'clock a.m. for our live morning worship service on Facebook Live. Just so go to the community of faith. The music, the ministry of the Word of God, you'll be inspired, you'll be ignited and empowered. And thank you for sharing and for praying because it takes people like you to partner with a ministry like this to make us even stronger. We thank God for you. Now let's go back to the Word. Ooh, I wish I had uh, uh, an audience I, I could, I could, I could, I could talk back to. It could talk back to me. I'm saying to you that you have to understand that many of us are not woke because we are drunk on distractions. Uh, we, we, we are drunk on distractions that have been uh, deviously devised by systems of corporate manipulation that's designed to have us engrossed with a preoccupation that's not based on reality in order for us not to be in tuned to what's happening to us around us and that's what's going to happen imminently for those who are coming behind us. That's why we got to wake this generation up 
right now because if you don't wake up right now, your children and grandchildren, uh, your children and grandchildren will suffer the brunt of you having slept through the age like a whip man weekle. And you'll wake up and discover that while you were preoccupied with the dazzling distractions uh, that were deviously desi devious designs that were all purpose to undermine your sustainability over the long haul. We are skating on thin ice and the sun is hot. Our nation is skating on thin ice and, and the sun and the sun is, is hot. We are drunk on distractions. We are preoccupied with distractions. One, the distractions of frivolity. Frivolous distractions like entertainment. Music with no meaning. Uh, yeah, it moves your body but won't move your heart. Uh, it, it stirs and stimulates and tantalizes uh, your physical, but it does nothing for your soul and your spiritual. And I'm not just talking about gospel music. You got to understand that when you look back on our history to understand people like Sam Cooke and people like Natalie Cole and people like Stevie Wonder, they, they wrote music, but it says something to your spirit, not just to your body. It was about a, 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 a sound of substance that would cause you to want to love somebody rather than hate somebody. But we are now being moved and distracted by entertainment that is meaningless and lacks substance. It touches nothing with the spirit. It only causes your body to vibrate and to gyrate and cause you to depict yourself in a way that's less than who you are. you got to understand the distractions of frivolity. A frivolous uh, distraction is fashion. We are so overwhelmed with fashion, with fashion. Fashion, fashion, how am I going to dress? What am I going to look? What's the latest? I got to have it. How much does it cost? Where can I get it? We are, we are consumed with fashion. Fashion is a design distraction. It causes us, got, we got to have the newest tennis shoes that just dropped. And we got to walk around with some drip because if I ain't blinging, then something is lacking in who I am. We are so consumed with fashion. Don't you know that the wealthiest people ain't bothered about fashion? Do, do you understand that fashion is a distraction for broke people looking for status? <laughs> Y'all don't want to talk back to me. I, I, I said we are overly consumed with the distraction of fashion, how to dress, what my shoes look like, what my hair looks like. Fashion, fashion, fashion. Yes, uh, sir. And... It's by DV Design that the most popular fashion for younger generations are, are fashions and apparel that exposes the body in ways that provokes hedonistic instincts and urges. Yes, I, I said hedonistic yes, instincts and urges are provoked purposely by the fashions you wear because if you dress like a hooker, you'll act like one. Ah, oh. ah. Uh, uh, be because uh, whatever you advertise determines what you catch. And uh, whatever you put on the market says what you are selling. And the way you sell yourself is about what you wear. Y'all don't want to talk back to me. And, and so even the jeans got to be cut up so much that it shows your upper thigh, not just your ankle. Because uh, what you're selling is determined who's going to buy and how much they'll pay. And so you're commoditizing yourself by the fashion that provokes hedonistic instincts and urges. Uh, so they have now what they call nude skirts. N nude skirts. Nude, nude skirts. Th that's the skirt that makes it look like you ain't got no underwear. Uh, uh, the nudeness under the lace that matches your skin tone in order to cause somebody to wonder what it's like underneath. Uh, it's it's, it's, it's playing to the hedonistic urges and impulses that rest and reside within even the best of us. Because even a noble person has something hedonistic hidden on the inside. Uh, yeah, yeah. Fashion that makes you look like, dress like, act like a freak. Because uh, freakishness now is uh, promoted to be uh, the best way to promote yourself. And if you got to look like a freak in order to be somebody, you have freaked yourself out. God, that's not the best of you. 
dis distractions, distractions. I'm just talking about distractions. Uh, distractions of, of superficial success. It's that success on the surface. We are driven by successful appearance that has nothing behind it. It's like the Hollywood movie set where you see the front that looks like a saloon, but there's nothing behind that, that front. It's, it's a Hollywood set. And since most of us are not going to stay anywhere long, we can pretend for just a moment. What? Uh, and, and, and so it's superficial success. You drive up looking successful, uh, but ain't no house at the, and, and you have no home. You, you, you dress looking successful, but your purse costs more than the money in your bank account. Uh, you, 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 you sport success in what you put on the front, but there's nothing behind it. You can't even read a bank statement, know nothing about accounting, have no business plan, and no plan for perpetuity. And if you die, we got to have a GoFundMe account to bury you. But you look successful while you were alive. Uh, we are distracted with frivolity. But we're also distracted with fun. Fun, 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 fun. Uh, pleasure is now most of your gods. Uh, uh, and you were sacrificed for fun. When, when fun is out of, oh, now fun is good. Don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying all fun is bad. I'm not saying life ought to be a bore. And I'm not saying to be saved and Christian and smart. You've got to be approved. I, what I am saying to you is that if fun is a bigger part of your agenda, then your priorities are jacked up. And while you are distracted chasing parties, somebody else is planning for your demise. While you are smoking and doping and tripping and singing and partying and beaching and by the poolside slipping, sipping your vodka and your crown, somebody is planning for your grandchild to never get out of poverty. Uh, we're distracted by, by fun, by, by fun, by fun, frivolous things, frivolous things, fun is a distraction. And then distractions of fame and fortune. Everybody now is a brand. It, you got to be a brand. Uh, 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 but a brand for what? Uh, and the, the distraction that I got to be famous and social media and Facebook have made celebrities out of people who are working at Jack in the Box. Because you are so headstrong that you're not somebody unless everybody knows you. Can I help you to understand? Nobody has to know you for, the, for you to be somebody. You were somebody when you came into this world because of being made in the image and likeness of God. The imago dei, your somethingness is not about somebody else's assumption or perceptivity. You are who you are because God made you who you are. You don't have to have likes and friends and people following you falsely and fakely on social media to give you prominence and status. You are a child of God. Yes, yes, the distraction of fame and fortune. And so uh, propaganda com continues to promote people of celebrity fame and fortune and putting them in your view every day, minute after minute, making you think unless you look like them, act like them, and can roll and ball like them, then you are lesser than them. And, and so, and so you, you, you determine your value based on how many likes you got on social media. Can I tell you, I don't need a like to know I like myself. You, you, you got to like who you are if nobody else ever likes your page or not. You are not the sum total of the likes you get on Facebook and the views your picture gets and your word gets. You are somebody without that. If yes. nobody recognizes yes. it, you yes. got to know who you are. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's good, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, fame and fortune. So many of us are looking for easy ways to get rich. Rich without producing anything. Rich, rich without making anything meaningful happen. You just want the stuff that money can buy and you want it quickly because uh, you're chasing uh, 
are you chasing fame and fortune and status? But that's a distraction. Because uh, the truth of the matter is that it... We sincerely hope you're enjoying the ministry of Bishop James Dixon. We also hope you appreciate the work we're doing to impact our community and the world. To keep up with Dr. Dixon and all we do, follow Bishop Dixon on all social media. Subscribe to his YouTube at Bishop James Dixon. Follow Bishop D on Facebook and Instagram. Stay connected and you'll be amazed at what we're doing to impact the world for Jesus. Stay connected and stay empowered by faith. Listen, listen, we hate to cut the message. Tomorrow, tune in for more of it because all week, the series is entitled, Are You Woke? Are You Woke? There's so many things facing the church, challenging us, so many adversarial forces. The church has to wake up to know what we should do in times like these. So tell your friends about it. Join us tomorrow morning for more Empowered by Faith. Don't forget to support us through your finances and through your prayers. And I know God will bless you for every seed that you sow into this ministry. You can text to give. That information is there. You can do it through our website. Or you can simply decide to drop something in the mail. We appreciate your support. And remember, whatever you sow into the kingdom of God, that's a harvest that God will grow in your life. You can never outgive God because he's going to always beat your giving. Thank God for you. Join us tomorrow for more Empowered by Faith. We thank you for tuning in today. We're certain this end time message has been relatable, resourceful, and is refueling you to want to make changes in order to be a change agent for yourself, your family, your community, state, and yes, this nation. This is not it. There's more. To receive this message in its entirety, simply go to the communityoffaith.org, click on the e-giving prompt. Here you'll click on the donation button and you'll find this message available as an MP3 or MP4. Or you may purchase by text, texting the word GIVE, that's G-I-V-E to 713-338-9011. Select this message and format preferences. Both are secure ways to obtain this message today. Believing in